Hello, so this is going to be just a very quick video sort of demonstrating and explaining Rontgen's experiment that led to the discovery of x-rays. Now I don't have any of the stuff that will actually fluoresce, but I can show you what he did of a cathode ray tube easily enough. Like I said, this isn't a proper physics video, but I don't think there's many demonstrations of this on YouTube. So what we've got here is an old sort of Crookes tube, cathode tube, and basically what will happen, we'll have um, plasma electricity shoot from that side into the plate on that side. And when it does that, it will produce very low amounts of x-rays, because I'm not going to be putting a stupid voltage through this. The power supply I'm going to connect it to is 3 kilovolts, uh, supposedly. So 3,000 volts, but how it works, it's just a power supply there, then two wires here, which I'm just about to connect to a plug socket, and then we'll demonstrate it. And what I wanted to do is also check what happens when you put a neodymium magnet near the beam, because apparently that can do really interesting things with Crookes tubes. And one of the wires has come off again, which is brilliant, which is why I'm using pegs. I know it's not the best material, but there we go. So let's start the experiment. So I'll just stop the video, get it all ready to be plugged in, and then I will start the camera. Okay, so it's wired up. Let's flick on the plug. And as you can see, a beautiful beam of plasma shooting across there. Let me flick the light off. Now, this would look really impressive if it was completely dark, but unfortunately it's not. But let me just zoom the camera in a bit more there on the Crookes tube. And basically there's a purple beam going across it. Now if I use the magnet there, that should mess with it. Yeah, you can see the beam moving a bit of the magnet. I don't know how visible that is on camera, but that's really cool. Um, but yeah, so what Rontgen's experiment was, if we look at the basic tube here, you've got the flat disc at the end there. And on the other end you've got the side the beam's coming from. Now what's happening is basically those... Um, the electricity, because it's more conductive than air, where it's going through one of these Crookes tubes, I believe. Now, bear in mind, I'm not a physicist or whatever, but I did want to demonstrate this on the video. What you're seeing here, basically, is that... Um, what would happen is, because they're smashing into that plate so hard, it's creating X-rays to a small degree when they hit that plate, because they're basically suddenly having to stop. You know, it's the breaking radiation. Now you can also get breaking radiation if you get a beta emitter, which is making electrons and you put some lead on it, because what will end up happening is when the beta emissions slam so hard into the lead, um, they create electrons that way. Um, well, not all electrons, but you know, they create x-rays that way because the energy can't just stop. So that's what's essentially happening with this Crookes tube now, is that energy is going across there. Now the actual Crookes tubes that were optimised for creating x-rays um, I believe were shorter and kind of rounder, the idea being that, you know, all of that energy is very quickly being stopped at a short distance. But this was essentially Rontgen's experiment. So as you can see, you've got this. The interesting thing, as we said, is if we put the magnet there, that is uh, definitely having an effect on it. Yeah, look at that. Now, I, don't want to, I don't know if it's possible to get shocked through there by that, but that's really interesting how it messes with that. So yeah, what would end up happening is Rontgen discovered, basically, where he was doing some light experiments originally with a tube. And he had this sort of tube itself um, covered or inside a closed box, so, you know, you couldn't see the light from the tube. And then he was noticing items in the room were fluorescing. And the reason was, was because the x-rays that nobody knew of at the time were essentially, yeah, creating that sort of, um, you know, unknown mysterious glow. So. You know, that is what, in 1895, led Rontgen to basically discover x-rays and then the medical uses for them. And, you know, kickstart the whole sort of discovery of radiation and everything like that. The ionising radiation, you know, alpha, beta, gamma and x-rays. Although x-rays are basically gamma rays, just created from a different source and of different strengths. But, yeah. So, if you're wondering why sort of Rontgen's name is used in the Chernobyl series, it's because in the 1920s there was a measurement system put in honour of Rontgen's name called the Rontgen or Rontagen, Rontgen, however you want to pronounce it. And what the Rontgen measurement was, of course, was that one centimetre of air cubed that was ionised was one Rontgen. So it's a very metric sort of measurement, that's why I like the Rontgen. So one millimetre, in theory, would be one milli Rontgen. Um, actually, no, I don't know if it would work out as one milli Rontgen, but the point was that, you know, one centimetre cubed is one Rontgen. That's a very easy base number, I'm going to confuse myself if I try and think too much about it now in the video. But as you can see, I can smell a bit of burning, which is probably the pegs, so I'll turn this off fairly soon. But yeah, what you can see is if you zoom in really nicely there, you can see how there is a beautiful purple glow coming from that tube. So let's flick the power off. There we go. And it stops. That's all there is to it. Uh, it's a cathode tube. But yeah, if we flick the power back on again, there you can go. You can see it's doing that. 
Tell you what, let's put the magnet completely next to that. Now let's flick it back on. And yeah, you can see where the magnet is uh, messing with the uh, thing there. Yeah, look at that, that's really interesting. Yeah, that's made me jump then when that flashed like that, but yeah, you can see the uh, effect of the magnet on the uh, beam. But yeah, it's, it's fascinating. But uh, yeah, anyway, so Rontgen's experiment was basically the discovery that if you had electricity shooting across a tube like this so fast, uh, with enough energy going in, and with x-rays, the higher the raw input, the actual more, um, let's turn that off, uh, the, you know, more powerful the actual effect was, um, yeah. So, that's basically, probably very badly explained, but I wanted to actually do it with a Crookes tube, sort of cathode tube, rather than just basically saying imagine it. Um, that's it, it's the electricity going through a vacuum tube so quickly um, that it's basically, oh and that's very hot now, I should say that. Yeah, Ooh, fucking shit, yeah. That is a very hot um, tube, because obviously it's heated up. But yeah, um, if you read into it, you can read on all sorts of experiments people have done with triodes and different tubes, you know, putting different voltages through them and measuring the x-rays. The craziest one I read about was a little triode that somebody connected, I think it was to a 10 or 30 kilowatt power supply. So a hell of a lot of volts, but, you know, so probably 10 times what was coming out of this, 3 to 10 times coming out of this one. And they managed to get, I think it was 200 millirontgen per hour being registered. I don't know what Geiger counter or iron chamber they were measuring it with, so I don't know if that was an accurate, you know, assessment of the actual dose. But it gives you an idea of just, you know, how many x-rays can be produced by something like this. If, um, you know, you did it. But there you go. That was Rontgen's experiment, basically. Or, you know, what Rontgen was doing when he discovered x-rays. Basically just running a tube like this, having it in a box, so he, uh, you know, the idea was that he couldn't see the light from it. And then noticing that stuff always glowed in the dark in the room, even when um, it shouldn't be. And that was a discovery that there was something, you know, invisible to us that had energy. Anyway. There you go. Um, there's probably physics channels that can tell you about Rontgen's experiment in a much better way, but sadly I've never seen many demonstrate a cathode tube sort of doing it, you know, where you can actually physically see the beam going across and what's happening.